Hello guys, welcome back to another video of introduction to anatomy. This is part four, which will be about basic human tissues. So if you want to check out the previous three parts, the links will be in the description below. One day you will hear about levels of organization, which are not our topic today, but I must mention that we have chemical level, cellular level, tissue level, organ level, systemic level, and organismal level. So each smaller unit or each smaller level will reflect the overall physiology or function of the human being. Histologically, tissues in the human body divided into four classes, epithelial tissue, nervous tissue, connective tissue, and muscular tissue. This is microscopical examination. Another classification, which is macroscopical classification, or gross classification of the human tissue divided the human body tissues into uh, several classes, but we have uh, only four major classes, uh, uh, which are the fascia, tendon, ligament, and cartilage. Other classes, such as bones, vessels, nerves, and muscle, will be taken at the next lectures. First of all, we will start with fascia. Fascia is a fibrous connective tissue arranged in sheets or tubes. It is binding or packaging tissue that could be found in all parts of the human body. How it look like? Like in this figure, uh, 3D, three-dimensional, microscopical uh, uh, web picture of the fascia. Fascia is like a galaxy that wrap or nest the planets. It has no beginning and no end. Two types of fascia are present in the human body. The first type of fascia is superficial fascia. The other name is subcutaneous tissue or hypodermis. It unites the dermis of the skin to the underlying deep fascia or bones. It consists of a mixture of fat and loose areolar connective tissue. It could be found everywhere in the human body. Example, scalp, palm, soles, eyelid, back of the neck, penis, scrotum, and clitoris. This is a paper of a histology textbook about loose areolar connective tissue, which it is distributed throughout the body as a binding and packaging material. These figure or this figure represent the superficial and deep fascia uh, that it unites the dermis of the skin. The dermis of the skin represented by the yellow pointer to the underlying deep fascia, which is represented by uh, the red pointer or bones. The black pointer represents the superficial fascia. Another slide about superficial fascia that it lies beneath the dermis and consists of loose connective tissue, adipose tissue. It is, uh, its function is to uh, a store, that it store water and fat and serves as insulation or insulator that prevents and protects from mechanical deformation. And also it provides a pathway for nerves and blood vessels. The fat in the superficial fascia is a substitute for a fur coat in hairless mammals such as man, pig, and cetacea. So the fur coat and, uh, uh, and the fat, there is a, a reverse relationship between the fur coat and the fat of the superficial fascia. So Wherever there is decrease in the fur coat, there is increase in the fat of the superficial fascia. And wherever there is increase in the fur coat, there will be decrease in the fat 
of the superficial fascia. The second type of superficial fascia uh, is the deep fascia, which is called the investing fascia, because this name is because it invests the deeper structures of the human body. Uh, its definition, it is a membranous layer of connective tissue devoid of fat that invests the muscles and neurovascular bundles. Example, investing layer of deep cervical fascia of the neck, uh, uh, endothoracic fascia of the thorax, endoabdominal fascia of the abdomen. Uh, it serves to or it act as compartmentalization of the limb muscles. It forms definite sheaths around muscles, example, femoral sheath. Uh, other example is transversalis fascia of the abdomen covering the muscles and aponeurosis of the anterior abdominal wall. This is slide about the location of the fascia. Superficial fascia or hypodermis is the adipose tissue that is present between skin and muscles while deep fascia is found between adjacent muscles. I want to ask you about this section through the thigh of the lower limb which is pointed by the by the yellow pointer the name give me the name of this plane another picture about superficial fascia by the blue arrow and uh, uh, deep fascia which is pointed by the uh, yellow pointer in the region of the joints such as wrist and ankle it is the deep fascia is thickened to form band like structures called the retinacula or retinaculum that function as a pulley holding tendon in position these two figures represented the retinaculum ser represent the superior extensor retinaculum at the ankle region and IER represent the inferior extensor retinaculum at the ankle region. The other picture with the yellow pointer represents the extensor retinaculum of the hand. These are very important to prevent the bow stringing of the tendon during contraction of the muscles, what is called bow stringing phenomena. At this figure, there is a rupture of the pulley that, uh, that uh, fix the tendon in its position. And lastly, you can't ignore fascia. If you dissect any region of the human body, it is present everywhere. An inflammation of the fascia called fasciitis. Now, tendons, generally, each muscle consists of fleshy brown part called belly as pointed by the red pointer. Other part is a fibrous white part called tendon as pointed by this red pointer. If the tendon, this tendon is cylindrical. If the tendon is flat, this is called aponeurosis. So anyone ask you about definition of aponeurosis, your answer will be flat tendon. Aponeurosis is a flat tendon. Examples about aponeurosis, like aponeurosis of the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, which are flat, and epicranial aponeurosis, also called gallia aponeurotica, which is also a uh, flat tendon of the uh, occipitofrontalis muscle. Tendons are cord-like fibrous structure. It is part of the muscle, attaches it to both origin and insertion. It consists of parallel fasciculi of collagen. It is resistant to stretching, but at the same time it is flexible and attaches voluntary muscles to other structures usually bone. Tendons often work across bones and for this they are subjected to friction 
but they gain protection by several structures such as bursa, tendon sheath, cartilage, and sesamoid bones. Bursae are flattened sac-like fluid-filled structures lined by synovial membrane. They are founded separating tendons from bones, muscles, ligaments, and skins. An inflammation of bursae called bursitis. Tendon sheaths are specialized tubular bursae that trap uh, that wrap around tendons. Also, it decreases friction. Types of tendon. We have two types. Thick tendon, which are located at the ends of the muscles, near the origin and insertion region. It is mostly cylindrical, cord-like. The other type is thin tendons. They are flat, thin sheets called aponeurosis example of aponeurosis as seen in this figure which is called palmar aponeurosis the third type uh, of basic human tissue is the ligaments are cords of dense connective tissue thicker than the fascia and tendon in comparison to tendon ligaments always connect something to something else while tendon connect muscle to something else types of ligaments we have two types thick ligaments other name is skeletal ligaments they connect bone to bone across joints like patellar ligament of the knee other example is ligamenta flava of the vertebral column that uh, connect the vertebrae with each other to form strong vertebral column as in this figures patellar ligament and ligamenta flava ligamenta flavum ligamentum flavum at this figure the second type is thin ligaments the other name is visceral visceral or thin ligaments they are related to the viscera and conducting blood, lymphatic vessels, and nerves to viscous. Example, mesenteries that connects intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. Other example is coronary ligament that connect the liver to the diaphragm. Such uh, examples seen in this figure. Coronary ligament and mesentery third example is the medial umbilical ligaments which is a remnants of umbilical arteries cartilage it is a form of connective tissue in which the cells and fibers embedded in a gel-like matrix it forms part of the skeleton where more flexibility is required it is less rigid than the bones and having a smooth surface surfaces so it present at the end of the bones allowing the joint to move with less friction so-called articular cartilage this figure reflects the histological structure of cartilage which is called hyaline cartilage as you could see, the uh, cell of the cartilage called chondrocytes, which are embedded in uh, spaces called lacunae. Hyaline cartilage characterized by homogeneous matrix. During embryonic life, all the bones take form as cartilage. Later in the prenatal or early postnatal period, become ossified and transformed into bones at the epiphyseal plates of the growing bones. Types of cartilage, we have three major types, hyaline cartilage, fibrous cartilage, and elastic cartilage. The names according to the type of the fibers present in the intercellular matrix. Hyaline cartilage characterized by 
it's uh, uh, containing homogeneous intercellular matrix. Uh, it is present at articular cartilage and rings of the trachea and ribs. Fibrous cartilage, uh, it, uh, intracellular, the intracellular uh, matrix is filled with uh, collagen fibers. Is it, uh, it is present at the intervertebral discs and labrum of the hip, shoulder, and menisci. Elastic cartilage, due to uh, its containing an elastic fibers, it is present at structures related to ENT, ears, nose, and throat. This is histological classification. Uh, you could see at the middle hyaline cartilage and its homogeneous intercellular matrix fibrocartilage it's containing collagen fibers and elastic cartilage and it's containing elastic fibers other figure that reflects the histological classification hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage and fibrocartilage fibrocartilage you could see the chondrocyte in a lacuna collagen fibers also uh, the elastic fibers and the elastic cartilage and the matrix which is homogeneous of the hyaline cartilage this is a paper from the books of histology this figure reflects the presence or the location of the whole three types elastic cartilage present in the ear fibrocartilage it is present wherever strength is needed and hyaline cartilage wherever there is strength and movement, active movement. So a hyaline cartilage will be uh, perfect at this site. Another figure, presence and location of the, uh, uh, the main three types of cartilage, elastic ear, hyaline, nose, throat, hyaline, rib cage. Distribution of the uh, cartilage, also at this figure. I want you to know that all four basic tissues of the human body have many, many uh, clinical, uh, clinical applications, as you could see in this figure. In older people, the fascia entangles and loss its elasticity not only as a result of aging but also because of loss of activity and this is the last uh, slide in this uh, presentation thank you for your listening